Now let's focus on solving trigonometric equations by factoring. So let's start with this example. Sine squared plus 2 sine x minus 3 is equal to 0. So how can we figure this out? Well, you could factor by substitution if you want. Let's pick a variable. Let's say that y is equal to sine x. Therefore, sine squared is y squared. 2 sine x is 2y. So here we have a trinomial. To factor this trinomial, we need to find a number that multiplies to the constant term negative 3, but adds to the middle coefficient 2. So what two numbers multiply to negative 3 but add to 2? This is positive 3 and negative 1. So to factor it, it's going to be y plus 3 times y minus 1. Now we can replace y with sine. So we have sine x plus 3 times sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. And let's only find the answers that are in the first quadrant. Now we need to set each factor equal to 0. Sine x cannot be negative 3. The range of sine is from negative 1 to 1. Sine x can be equal to 1. And we know that sine pi over 2 is 1, so x is pi over 2. So that's the answer for this problem. Here's another one. 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 3. Let's find the value of cosine. So this time we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 2. So first we've got to multiply 2 and negative 3, which is negative 6. What two numbers multiply to negative 6 but add to the middle coefficient of negative 1? So this is negative 3 and 2. Now the way we factor this particular trinomial is different from the last example because of this coefficient. So what we're going to do is replace negative 1 cosine with positive 2 cosine x and negative 3 cosine x. So the 2 and the 3 comes from these two numbers. Next, we're going to factor by grouping. In the first two terms, let's take out the greatest common factor, which is 2 cosine x. So this leaves behind 2 cosine squared divided by 2 cosine is simply cosine. And 2 cosine divided by itself is positive 1. Now, let's take out the GCF, or the greatest common factor, in the last two terms. So let's take out negative 3, and this will give us cosine x plus 1 again. So now let's factor cosine x plus 1. So we're just going to write it once in the next line, and then the stuff on the outside will go in the second parentheses. So that's 2 cosine x minus 3. Now let's set each factor equal to 0. For this one, if we add 3 and then divide by 2, cosine is 3 over 2, which is greater than 1, so that's not possible. For this one, cosine is equal to negative 1. Cosine pi is negative 1, so x is pi, and that's the answer. Let's try this one. 4 sine squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Another way you could factor is if you have a difference of perfect squares. a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. The square root of 4 sine squared is 2 sine. And the square root of 1 is 1. So one of them is going to be positive, the other will be negative. And so that's how you could factor the expression above. So now we could set 2 sine x plus 1 equal to 0, and 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. So let's go ahead and solve each. So if we subtract 1 and then divide by 2, we can see that sine is negative 1 half. 
And here, we need to add 1 and then divide by 2, so sine is positive half. We know that sine 30 is 1 half, so here it's going to be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. It's negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So because it can be positive a half and negative 1 half, we have all four answers within the range of 0 to 2 pi. So x can be any one of these four values. Now for this problem, you can factor it using the difference of squares technique, like in the last example. You could say cosecant x plus the square root of 2 times cosecant x minus the square root of 2 is equal to 0. You could solve it that way. But I think it's easier if we just add 2 in this case. If we add 2 to both sides, cosecant squared is equal to positive 2. And then we could just take the square root of both sides. Just don't forget that cosecant x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Now, cosecant is 1 divided by sine. So if we flip both sides, sine x is plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. And then if we rationalize it, we'll see that sine x is equal to plus or minus square root 2 divided by 2. So therefore, x can be pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, or 7 pi over 4. The first two will give you a positive value, positive root 2 over 2. The second two, or the last two, that's going to give you the negative value. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So sine 5 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2. But for this particular problem, these are the answers within the range 0 to 2 pi. Go ahead and solve this particular trigonometric equation. Let's say that sine 2x is equal to cosine x. How can we find the value of x? Well, first, what we need to do is use the double angle formula of sine. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x times cosine x. Now, you don't want to divide by cosine. You don't want to do this because if you do, you'll lose an answer. Instead, subtract both sides by cosine. So take this term and move it to the left side. So therefore, we have 2 sine x cosine x minus cosine x, which is equal to 0. Now at this point, factor out the GCF, which is cosine. 2 sine cosine divided by cosine is 2 sine x. Negative cosine divided by cosine, well, that's negative 1. So now we could set cosine x equal to 0 and 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. If we add 1 and then divide by 2, sine x is equal to 1 half. Now cosine x is equal to 0 when x is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And sine x is equal to 1 half when x is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So these are the answers within a range from 0 to 2 pi. Let's work on this example. 4 cosine squared plus 4 sine x minus 5. So we have a trinomial, which means we're going to have to factor at some point. However, we have two different trig functions, a cosine and a sine. We need to make them the same, so we need to use the Pythagorean identity. We know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So cosine squared, if you solve for it, it's a 1 minus sine squared. So we need to replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. Now let's distribute 4 to 1 and to negative sine squared. So this is going to be 4 minus 4 sine squared 
plus 4 sine x minus 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So this is what we now have. Now we need to multiply both sides by negative 1 just to get rid of the negative in front of sine squared. So now we have 4 sine squared minus 4 sine x plus 1 is equal to 0. So now we need to factor. Let's multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term. 4 times 1 is 4. And let's look for two numbers that multiply to 4 but add to the middle coefficient, negative 4. So this is negative 2 and negative 2. So therefore we have 4 sine squared minus 2 sine x minus 2 sine x plus 1. And that's equal to 0. So now let's factor by grouping. In the first two terms, we could take out a 2 sine x. 4 sine squared divided by 2 sine, that's going to be 2 sine x. And negative 2 sine x divided by positive 2 sine x is negative 1. Now, in the last two terms, let's take out a negative 1. If we do so, we're going to have positive 2 sine x minus 1. So whenever these two terms are the same, that means that you're on the right track. So just write that expression once, 2 sine x minus 1. And here we also have another 2 sine x minus 1. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So if we just set one of them equal to 0 because they're the same, we can see that sine x is going to equal positive 1 half. And so x has to be pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, and 5 pi over 6. Sine pi over 6 and sine 5 pi over 6 is positive 1 half. So those are the answers in the range of 0 to 2 pi. Here's another example. Let's say that cosine 2x is equal to cosine x. Find the value of x in the range from 0 to 2 pi. So we have a double angle formula. And cosine 2x can be equal to any one of the three equations. It could be cosine squared minus sine squared. You could set it equal to 2 cosine squared minus 1. Or 1 minus 2 sine squared. Which one should we use? Now, when solving trigonometric equations, you only want to have one type of trig function, not two. So since we have a cosine on the right, we want to use the form that doesn't contain sine. So we want to use this form. Let's replace cosine 2x with 2 cosine squared minus 1. And let's take this cosine and move it to this side. So we got 2 cosine squared minus cosine x minus 1. Now let's factor. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 2, but add to the middle coefficient negative 1. This is going to be negative 2 and positive 1. So let's replace negative cosine with negative 2 cosine plus 1 cosine. And let's factor by grouping. In the first two terms, Let's take out 2 cosine x. So we're going to have cosine x minus 1 left over. And the last two terms, just take out a positive 1. So this is not going to change. Your goal is to make these two expressions look exactly the same. So we're going to have cosine x minus 1 multiplied by the stuff on the outside, which is 2 cosine x plus 1, and all of that is equal to 0. Now let's set cosine x minus 1 equal to 0, and the other factor 
equal to 0. So adding 1 to both sides, we have that cosine x is equal to 1. If we subtract by 1 and then divide by 2, cosine is also negative 1 half. Cosine x is equal to 1 when x is 0 or 2 pi. However, our answer does not include 2 pi. We have a parenthesis here, so we're just going to use 0 only. Now, cosine is negative 1 half when x is equal to 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Keep in mind, cosine of 60 degrees, the reference angle, has a value of positive 1 half. 60 is pi over 3, so we need that angle in quadrant 2 and 3 where cosine is negative. And 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 exists in quadrants 2 and 3. So these are the answers. x can be equal to 0, 2 pi over 3, or 4 pi over 3. And so that's it. Now I have a question for you. Let's say if sine x is equal to the square root of 3 divided by 2. To solve this equation, can we say that x is equal to the arc sine of the square root of 3 divided by 2? Can we say that? Well, you need to be careful because the sine function goes on forever. However, the arc sine function does not. It's restricted. So therefore, whenever you're dealing with this equation, with sine, and you want to solve for x, you can get an unlimited number of answers. When you're dealing with the arc sine or inverse sine, you're only going to get one answer. So make sure you understand the difference. So to make this equation true, x can be pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So it could be pi over 3, it can be 7 pi over 3, it can be uh, 13 pi over 3, and so forth. And also, x can be 2 pi over 3, because sine is positive in quadrant 2. So it could be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So you have an unlimited number of answers that makes this equation true. When dealing with arc sine, there's only one true answer. Arc sine does not exist in quadrant 2, only in quadrant 1. And the range of it is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the only answer that works for this expression is simply pi over 3. It's not going to be 2 pi over 3. It's not going to be 7 pi over 3. It's just pi over 3. So if you're solving sine functions and cosine functions in this format, you have an unlimited number of answers. Keep that in mind. But when dealing with an inverse trig function, typically you only get one answer.